Chapter 2. The Love of God. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God, and into the patient waiting for Christ. 2 Thess. 3 5. Man can find little real satisfaction for his soul in the tinsel and toys of this world. Riches, honors, lust, power, and the temporal glories of mortality, still leave a man with a spiritual emptiness. It is only the love of God that gives man peace of mind, and the contentment that his soul yearns for. The love of God should be the most intense desire in motivating mortal man. This was beautifully portrayed by an angel who talked to the prophet Nephi. And the angel said unto me, Knowest thou the meaning of the tree which my father saw? And I answered him, saying, Yea, it is the love of God which sheddeth itself abroad in the hearts of the children of men, wherefore it is the most desirable above all things. And he spake unto me, saying, Yea, and the most joyous to the soul. I Nephi 11 21-23. The love of God then, is the most desirable above all things and the most joyous to the soul. Jesus even listed this as the first great commandment by saying we should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Matt. 2237. The second greatest commandment was like unto it, that we should love thy neighbor as thyself. The love of God and the love of our fellow men, seem to be the theme for the apostles of Christ in all their writings. John the Beloved well deserved the name, for his writings are filled with this divine principle of love. The Bible commentator, Halley, noticed this especially in two chapters of John's epistles. I John 3 13-24. Love. The dominant note of this epistle is love. We should love one another, 311. He that loveth not his brother is not of God, 310. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brethren, 314. He that loves not abides in death, 314. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, 315. Let us love one another, 47. Every one that loves is begotten of God, and knows God, 4-7. Love is of God, 4-7. We ought to love one another, 4-11. God is love, 4-16. He that abides in love abides in God, 4-17. If we love one another God abides in us, 4-12. Perfect love casts out fear, 4-18. We love because he first loved us, 4-19. If a man say, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar, 4-20. He that loves not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? 420. I John 4 7-21. Love. John returns to his favorite theme, love, the keynote of the epistle. He is very insistent that being saved by the grace of Christ does not release us from the necessity of obeying Christ's commandments. And Christ's chief commandment is love. We know Christ if we keep his commandments, 2-3. He that says, I know him, and keeps not his commandments, is a liar, 2-4. Whatsoever we ask, we receive, because we keep his commandments, 322. This is his commandment, that we love one another, 323. He that keeps his commandments abides in him, 324. This commandment we have from God, that he who loves God love his brother also, 421. This is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, 53. It is told of John that, when he was old and too feeble to walk, he would be carried into the church, and, in speaking, would always say, little children, love one another. It is the Lord's Commandment. Halley's Bible Handbook, pages 616 to 617. The more righteous men become, the more they are drawn towards God and His association. But if a man is drawn towards the things of this world, he loses his love of God. Jesus condemned the Pharisees saying, I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. John 5:42. John the Apostle explained why they did not have the love of God. He wrote, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 1 John 2 15, conversely, we can reason that if a man loves God, then the love of the world or the things in the world, is not in him. In his first letter to the Corinthian saints, Paul also elaborated on this principle of love as charity is accurately defined as the pure love of Christ. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, love, I am become a sounding brass, or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, love, it profiteth me nothing. I Cor. 13 1-3. Then Paul added a few more sentences which were analyzed by Henry Drummond, author of The Greatest Thing in the World. He said a beam of light can be broken into a spectrum of colors by means of a prism, and also the principle of love could be broken into various elements, as shown in the diagram below. Patience charity, love, suffereth long. Kindness and is kind. Generosity charity, love, envieth not. 
Humility charity, love, vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Love courtesy doth not behave itself unseemly. Unselfishness seeketh not her own. Good temper is not easily provoked. Without guile thinketh no evil. Virtue rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. I Cor. 13 4-6. It follows then that a man practicing these godly attributes will soon become like God himself. The more they think, speak and act like God, the more they are drawn towards him, and he is drawn towards them. Paul conceded that love is the fulfilling of the law. Rom. 13:10. In other words, if you love God, you would not do anything to offend him. If a man really loved God, he would have no other gods before him, nor take his name in vain, nor desecrate his holy day. If you loved your neighbor, you would not steal from him, or bear false witness against him, or covet his goods, nor hurt him. If a man truly loved God and his neighbor, he would only do things that would please them. This is the fulfilling of that law. The prophet Joseph Smith acknowledged that. Love is one of the chief characteristics of deity, and ought to be manifested by those who aspire to be the sons of God. A man filled with the love of God, is not content with blessing his family alone, but ranges through the whole world, anxious to bless the whole human race. TPJS, page 174. The Apostle John said, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. I John 5 3, and Jesus said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. John 14 15, conversely then, we can say that those who do not keep God's commandments, do not love him. An important blessing was promised to those who keep his commandments. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God. John 7:17. 7, Thus, those who do the will of God and keep his commandments, will know true doctrine from false doctrines. The prophet Joseph added. Until we have perfect love, we are liable to fall, and when we have a testimony that our names are sealed in the Lamb's book of life, we have perfect love, and then it is impossible for false Christs to deceive us. TPJS, page 9. This perfect love is difficult to acquire. Jesus said it is easy to love your neighbor, for if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? Matt. 546, then later he added, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Matt. 2239, but perfect love exceeded this kind of love, and came to be a new commandment. Toward the end of his ministry, Jesus introduced his new commandment. John 13 34, he explained it by saying, This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15 12 13. To love your neighbor as yourself is one kind of love, but to lay down your life for others is another and greater kind of love. Jesus would illustrate this in his own life when he would lay down his own life for the sheep. John 10 15, the apostles had perfect love, too, for they all became martyrs. This was a final consecration to God. A religion that does not require sacrifice of all things or a full consecration for God, can never exalt a man. Let us here observe, that a religion that does not require the sacrifice of all things, never has power sufficient to produce the faith necessary unto life and salvation. When a man has offered in sacrifice all that he has, for the truth's sake, not even withholding his life, and believing before God that he has been called to make this sacrifice, because he seeks to do his will, he does know most assuredly, that God does and will accept his sacrifice and offering, and that he has not nor will not seek his face in vain. Lectures on Faith, Number 7. One of the greatest blessings promised to those who have this perfect love, and are willing to sacrifice all things, is described in this scripture, he that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. John 14 21. To have the heavens opened and become a witness of the Savior of the world, is the final proof of a man's love for God. This is one of the great promises the Lord made to his disciples. But it is not just a privilege, as we will learn, it is a goal, a requirement, an obligation, and a necessity for God's elected sons. But there are many other blessings promised to those who achieve this perfect love for God. I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Paul, 1 Cor. 2 9. In summary then, consider the importance of this love of God as beautifully and powerfully written in Scripture. 1. It is the first and greatest commandment. 2. It is the most joyous to the soul. 3. It is more desirable than anything else. 4. Those who love God will know true doctrine from false doctrine. 5. To love the things of this world is an opposition to the love of God. 6. To love God causes a man to keep God's commandments. 7. It is the fulfillment of all the law and the prophets. 8. The Savior will manifest himself to those who love him. 
9. The Father will also reveal himself and abide with those who love him. 10. And finally the promise of unseen and untold blessings in heaven await those who have the love of God. But before man can obtain a perfect love for God, they must learn who he is, what kind of person he is, and how they can approach him subjects covered in the following chapter.